good morning everyone welcome back to 9th class social studies so in the last classes we discussed about the lithosphere and today we are moving to the third chapter hydrosphere so while introducing the chapter uh, we tried to define the hydrosphere as a rim of water around the earth surface okay and the word hydrosphere it comes from a greek word hudo which means water okay and we have seen uh, the evolution of the earth while discussing about the evolution of the earth we discussed a particular theory of the earth's origin big bang theory after the big bang or the big collision the earth was a burning sphere of gas and that continuous burning has been cooled down to take the present form of the earth and that cooling process was propelled through continuous raining it was raining for over a long period of time we cannot just assume maybe millions of years that burning sphere of gas might have uh, cooled down through the continuous showers of water and uh, a large amount of water it has been showered on the surface of the earth and the water that has been showered on the surface of the earth was collected in all the valleys or in the uh, areas which is Uh, uh less than the normal size or the all all the uh, hollow areas were covered with the water so that watery areas are all together called as hydrosphere okay and the water comes to the earth not only in the form of rainfall it comes through a different forms whatever is the form of water that is being deposited on the air surface once it comes to their surface if it is a watery substance it makes a part of hydrosphere okay and in this chapter sure we will be discussing about the water and we know the maximum amount of water is being uh, stored in oceans very great amount around 90 97% of the total water is stored in ocean surfaces so sure we will be discussing about the oceans mainly we will be discussing about the water and all the watery substances so in today's class we discusses two major topics that is hydrological cycle and water sources hydrological cycle the hydrological cycle it can be mathematically expressed in a way called rainfall is equal to runoff plus evapotranspiration r is equal to r o plus e t r of rainfall r o runoff e t evapo transpiration we will discuss about uh, this hydrological cycle e before that why do we call this hydrological cycle cycle is something that is rotating does water have a cyclic nature that is a question does water have a cyclic nature yes water has cyclic nature the major specification of water is that it is renewable resource reusable resource water can be used multiple times it can be used reused again used so there is one thing very special about the water it can be used multiple times so it has got a cyclic activity it moves from oceans to the land to the land to the oceans from oceans to the land and from the land again back to oceans 
so this cyclic activity of water or the cyclic nature of water is responsible for having life on earth and the continuous exchange of water is called hydrological cycle and this continuous exchange of water happens between ocean land atmosphere subsurface and all organisms that is all together called as hydrological cycle what is very important as it is very important for the sustainability of life the scientists all around the earth from different countries they are trying to find the presence of water in any other planets if we get a trace of water in any other planet it proves that there will be a possibility of having life so that is or that just shows how important the water is for us okay we shall come back to the hydrological cycle it has got six stages hydrological cycle has got the six different stages they are evaporation transportation condensation precipitation runoff and groundwater okay six are there once again evaporation transportation condensation precipitation runoff and groundwater so altogether six stages are there we shall try to explain the six stages some of the stages you may have already uh, learned in earlier classes evaporation the process of uh, changing water into vaporous stage or gaseous stage that is what is called the evaporation water on the earth's surface is getting transported to oh sorry uh, changed into uh, gaseous form that is what is called the evaporation okay and uh, not only the water is getting directly uh, converted the human beings are providing water to the atmosphere plants are providing water to the atmosphere animals are providing water to the atmosphere and all these processes got certain special names that you are studying in science but all these process of providing water to the atmosphere through vapor stage is called the evaporation okay and the second stage is transportation transportation transport to take something to somewhere so evaporated water is taken the process of moving that evaporated water is called the transportation and the transported water will reach to a place where the water is getting converted to droplets or clouds small drops of water the solid uh, parts of water or solid state of water and that process is called the condensation then precipitation that ice drops or that uh, uh, what you call uh, the clouds it is trying to deposit the water on the air surface the process of depositing the water on the air surface that is what is called the precipitation it is not only in the direct form of water maybe in the form of mist or in the form of ice sleet fog anything it can in whatever the form if the water is deposited by on their surface it is called as precipitation then runoff once the water is deposited on their surface in the pure form of water water has got a nature it moves from the high to the lower areas so it moving off and why it moves so while the water is washing away some part of that water is penetrating into the earth that process is called the uh, runoff then ground water the penetrated water goes deeper to the layers of the earth and is being stored there for the future use that is what is called the ground water six stages evaporation transportation condensation precipitation runoff and ground water so nothing can be avoided 
none of these six stages can be avoided while we are discussing about hydrological cycle or the hydrological cycle will not be completed without any of these stages evaporation is necessary transportation is necessary condensation is necessary precipitation is necessary runoff is necessary and groundwater is necessary that's all about the hydrological cycle next is water sources i said around 97 percentage 95 above that many percentage of water is stored in oceans the highest storehouse of water is oceans and what is the speciality of oceanic water what is the taste of oceanic water the oceanic water taste salty saline ocean water can we consume that saline ocean water directly no You see, ninety-seven percentage of water, ninety-seven point two five percentage of water is useless. Cannot be used directly because they are saline in nature. Next, what is the uh, balance? Two point seven five. Two point seven five percentage of water is fresh. That can be used by the human beings. but the problem is that out of that available 2.75 percentage of water out of that 68 percentage of water is stored in the form of ice in polar regions arctic and arctic regions can we consume it no 29 percentage is underground groundwater so less than 1 percentage of water is readily available for human consumption see out of 100 units of water just one unit of water is readily available for human beings living organisms you cannot say that living organisms because in saline water living organisms are there for the human beings we have got just a less than 1 percentage of water and that 1 percentage or less than 1 percentage of water is enough for the entire earth to survive with the human life importance of water to the human being Okay, that's all enough today. We just discussed only two topics, only two topic: hydrological cycle and water sources. And the uh, next about the ocean, the salinity. That's all we will be discussing in the coming classes. Okay, that's all. Thank you.